Hello, I'm here to help confuse you entirely regarding what a fairy is by trying to explain what they actually are. To get even an ounce of understanding regarding Irish, Celtic, Norse, Germanic, Aztec, Mayan, and a dozen other cultures, you gotta understand some things about where we get their stories and why they aren't really complete. I'm gonna race through this quickly, so bear with me. In a time long since past, a bunch of small groups of people had tiny cultures all over the place. They told neat, silly stories and danced in flower fields while wild animals gobbled them up. It was a fun time when things to be afraid of were actually at your front door. But then, Rome and England and Spain and probably a couple others slapped their swords on the table, killed everyone, burned everything, and built a couple of churches. So people in the past few centuries who were curious about the now snuffed magic in the world get to look back on the burnt scraps of folklore. And almost all of the books regarding fables in modern day are written by literate people who went out into the backwoods and the boonies of countless countries and spent a couple weeks talking to Grandpa Dinkus while he was three moonshines deep, and then later in their writing added some pizzazz to the retold bedtime stories that this old kook heard while he slept on a straw bed. So. All that out of the way, let's try and jump through mythology to put together what a fairy is. Right off the bat, they come from several cultures and changed form as they went, but the earliest ones that I can find were just called she, generally meaning people from the earth, or people who live inside that big mound of dirt right over there. So they're sort of like primordial elemental nature spirits. These old Celtic fairies actually inspired the Greeks to create nymphs, who are also nature spirits that behave like fairies. The idea of little hill people eventually led to another bleed over with Norse dwarves, which is why we have these little gnome dwarf fairy dudes who say hi ho before they even meet the ho in the movie. Then you get the Swedish elfa, or elves that look like gnomes. Like this lady in Adventure Time, I think her name is Olva. Hey, that's you! Your name's Olva! Hi, Alva. She's Swedish. I bet you didn't know that these little caps that every gnome wears are called Phrygian caps, and although the caps normally make the gnomes invisible at will, I like this idea. They just, they don't want to discover gravity. But in every original lore, elves are actually gnomes. They weren't taller than people till Tolkien rolled around. It seems to be kind of a forgotten fact, but The Lord of the Rings is self-described as a profoundly Catholic work, so Tolkien definitely snuck angels into the story under one of the several names for dwarves. I don't get why hobbits weren't called gnomes. The word hobbit actually is derived from... it means hole builder. Are you confused yet? Good, because the word gnome actually popped up in the 1500s, likely based on the root word for earth, like geo, like geodude. So we keep circling back to Earth Dwellers. Funny thing though, after Christianity altered the stories, many people believe that fairies and all fey creatures were fallen angels taken along during Lucifer's failed coup against the king. So basically, in the pre-Tolkien, post-Christian retcon timeline, fairies are demons and devils. I actually like the idea a lot that developed later, where fairies were too silly and mischievous to fall below the earth with the actual demons. So when they were cast out, they only fell halfway, and they were cursed to be on earth instead of hell. So from that perspective, they're half demons and half angels with no divine purpose. Another result of the big retcon is the division of classified fae, or she, or fairies. In Scotland, they were divided into the peaceful but vengeful Seely Court and the happily offensive Unseely Court. Or, in Ireland, they were divided into trooping fairies who ran around playing music and the solitary fairies who mess with you if you come to their house. These ones being banshees and leprechauns and probably hags. I think witches were like fae people. A prime example being Morgana le Fay. On top of all that, we also have common stories attributed to fairy activity, one of the main ones being the story of the changeling. In essence, you shit out the world's ugliest baby and you don't want to take responsibility for it. Because the concept of a birth defect wasn't understood well, you could just say that fairies took your baby and replaced it with a goblin that you get to throw in the garbage can for free. So let's, let's go ahead and retrace my steps really quick. A fairy is an elemental, a nymph, a dwarf, an elf, a gnome, a demon, an angel, a ghost, the undead, goblins, and also trolls and leprechauns, who I have yet to mention all range in size from smaller than a thumb to the size of Lady Dimitrescu. I almost forgot to add this in, but a kobold also is actually a fairy. 
and a sprite, and a boggart, and a goblin. But not a dragon. Originally, they were just little scaly dudes who looked vaguely dragon-like. Just about everything in and surrounding Germany had their own interpretations of how the world worked, and how mystical the world of the Fae was. The trooping fairies were eventually adapted into one of Shakespeare's plays, which is actually the first time the idea of royalty was introduced to fairies. The Midsummer's Dream story is essentially the king and the queen of fairies who show up to a wedding and start drugging people into a love square triangle, it's a weird shape, constantly making mistakes until they pull the ending of the Super Mario Bros. 2 game to save face. That's, that's the plot of this. But the idea of the two fae courts comes from, as far as I'm aware, a book that further divided fairies into good and bad. But they aren't good or bad. The name Seely means silly, and unseely essentially means mischievous. It's literally the guys who have fun, and the guys who have fun at your expense. Alright, so if I'm understanding this right, that's half of the entire D&D roster, and 90% of the Tolkien monsters are just being fairies. I know I'm detracting, and that's obviously why we call them fairy tales, but it's such a weird idea to think that fairies are not just the, 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 a sprite. It's everything. It's every mythical thing. Oh yeah, and in Shakespeare's play, the queen of fairies falls in love with a donkey dude because a puka put juice in her eyes? The character Puck is a puka, which is a different kind of shape-shifting fairy that grabs people and runs around real fast. I might make a short video about them because they're in my book. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out on kind of a sad note. Most stories say that the fairies have long since gone, with very few of them only showing themselves to the elderly and the young. Because the old people who don't give a shit, and the young who don't know anything, are the only truly silly or mischievous people left. That's kind of a bummer, but I guess it means you can step into a fairy ring and be fine. Sorry. Goodbye.